What's up? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Under Construction, our third installment. I'm Rodney Richardson. To my right, this is Jamal Darvish. Sure. To my left, this is Vince Dunlap. Uh, fellas, how was your weekend? Man, busy, 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 busy. Busy watching the Hornets win. <laughs> Got to represent today. I can wear this with pride today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of NCAA, uh, March Madness stuff going on, man. It's a it's a great weekend for basketball. Cool, man. cool, cool. Man, uh, cosign, cosign. Everything was good. Busy weekend, great NCAA weekend. I came very close to seeing my dream come true of uh, Duke basketball losing in the first weekend again. But you know, you know how the zebras go, you know, yeah, and uh, yeah. they, they they live to see another weekend. But you know, my Tar Heels in it. You know, the Hornets had a good week. Um, I'm alive. And uh, all good, all good. So, my weekend, I uh, pretty much went to my wife's cousin's wedding, and I got one, 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 one name for you. Channel me love! <laughs> That's all I got to say, man. That's all I got to say. All right. All right, and we're going to uh, segue into the 10th uh, pick topic. Uh, we're going to discuss the Hornets. Uh, last week, the Hornets went 3-1 and one, with the long loss being to Philadelphia and back-to-back -back crazy wins against the Celtics and the Raptors. One noticeable thing was the youngsters got to play. How do you feel about that, Jamal? Well, first of all, I want to point out that someone on this panel said we're going on, on four. We're not going to say who, but, you know, I get why, man. And <laughs> they, look, man, going into this week, I looked at this schedule, and I just said, man, we're done. Like, just, I, I even tweeted, I said, April 10th can't get here fast enough. <laughs> and I did it be, at halftime of the Celtics game. I said, I, we were down, what, 18 to the Celtics? Yeah, so I'm just like... Yeah. Get the season over with. I'm 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 tired. I can't take anymore. And you fast forward to last night. They're sucking me back in. No, I don't know. Don't suck me back in. No, it's like a drug, man. It's do, a drug. Do, do not do this to me, Hornets. Do not put my emotions back into this. I was perfectly fine with no emotion. I was perfectly fine with wanting the season to be over with. I was comfortable. You suck. You have sucked me back in, Hornets. Why do you play with our emotions like that? It's like being in a sucky, bad relationship. It's like, no, don't do this. Let me go. And, 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 and we're back here. And, and, and to co-sign off of what Jamal said, I really don't have anything to say. If you would have told me going into last week that we would have played the 76ers, that we would have played, who was it, Minnesota? Minnesota. Then we turned around and we played Boston, and then we played Toronto. If you would have told me that we would have played those four teams in one week and we would have went 3-1, three and, one, three and one. Tony Parker didn't play two of those games, Nick Batum didn't play one of those games, Cody Zeller's been out for two or three days, like, I would have slapped you across the face. <laughs> I would have slapped you. Like, I would, I would have slapped the, the The only positive that you could have spun to me was the fact that we were going to get to see the youngest player. Because gotcha, gotcha. the season was over with, we're going to get the number nine, the number 10, the number 11 pick again, right. and, and, yeah. and, and we'll be doing this all over again. Okay, cool. So for us to go three and one, um, I just want to say, James Borrego, Welcome to the NBA well, coaching Welcome team. to the season, James. You, you have arrived. You have well, arrived. Well, you have yeah, arrived. You it, took you, it took you 60, 70 games, yeah. but you got here. You're you okay? finally here, Brady. Thank you, sir. Now, I don't have any tea on me right now, but if I did, I would be drinking it right now. because That's some coffee right now. Now, now, now. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> now, look, for those of you that don't know, we, we, we have a Hornets group. So if you're a Hornets fan, go look for Charlotte Hornets. There's about 6,000 members in there. We're always talking Hornets basketball. So for the entire season, I've been saying three words. Play, Play the youngins. The youngins. Yes, Play sir. the youngins. I've been saying that all year, and I've been getting my ass beat all year for that. Even, even on one of my episodes, I heart, okay, the season is about done with. Play Bacon. Play Bridges. Play Graham. Tony, you're retiring. You're old. Thank you for your service. And, and, and it looks like the Hornets are doing that. Do you guys want, kind of want to dive into your uh, opinions of Bacon and, uh, and Bridges' play? Before I do that, let me say something. I don't ever want to see Nick Batum again. <laughs> like, ever. I, look, man, I know how unrealistic this is. And I, I know it's like fantasy world. I don't care if it takes getting David Tepper involved. Buy Nick Batum out. And just <laughs> I, call call the CEO of Bank of America. Call David Tepper. Whatever you got to do. But I don't ever want to see him again, man. And as it relates to your question, man, Bacon is getting the minutes. Bridges is starting. Devontae Graham... It's like all these dudes are growing up in front of our very eyes yeah. on yeah. the job. Yeah. <clears throat> because 
I, I will I'll present a, a somewhat of a counter argument to playing them early and earlier in the season. I still say, especially Devontae Graham, quite still wasn't ready yet. But it's very possible that, like I said, we are seeing these young guys grow up when it's time. It's like perfect timing right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the timing couldn't be better. And kudos to James Borrego. I'm really, really, really impressed with Dwayne Bacon. And the thing is, what I'm most impressed about with, with Bacon and Devontae Graham, they are showing more po poise than the $25 million man. Facts, 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 facts. Not, yeah. We're not even talking ability and athleticism, but poise, gotcha. not making stupid mistakes. Gotcha. Like, it, it, I hate to heart back on platoon, but dude, you've been in the league how long? Like, 10, 11, 12, and you got young guys who are doing it better than you when we need them to. Yeah. And the caveat off of that, let me point out that, that last night versus Toronto, when uh, Kemba Walker and the rest of the starters came back in late in the fourth, we had a, a 12 point lead. When Malik Monk and Devontae Graham went to the bench, that's when we lost that lead. That's mm -hmm. when Toronto made it a game. James Borrego gets paid a lot more money than I do to be a head coach. He he obviously knows what he was doing. But I actually would have took him out and put Graham and Monk back in. Thankfully, we were able to shock the world. Thank you, Jeremy Lamb, again. But, Jeremy! <laughs> but I think, I think it is almost criminal that the youngest haven't played more minutes up until this point. Gotcha. And if I if I were to see James Borrego, if I were to see Coach, I would want to ask him why did he start playing them now? Because after the All Star break, I can answer that. <laughs> after the All Star break, I took it as a tank move. Not not hey, the team was going to tank, but I took it as you know what we probably aren't going to make the playoffs. So let me get these guys some burn now. And again, we just went three and one in the past week. And I don't know what it is about fans that they have to wait and see it before gotcha. they do see it. But you guys know, I've been screaming to play Bacon for the last two years. Right. And this goes back to Steve Clifford. What I would never understand is how you can take Monte Brown and send him to the G League and watch him put up 42 points, call him back up, and then sit him on the bench for two weeks. Right, right, right. Yeah. That, that, that would never make sense to me. Right. And to see these guys play now, when it comes to your tank question, I, I, I always don't know which way to answer. because. The youngins are playing good. I honestly feel like we can actually give the Bucks a run for their money. I'm not saying we will win, win the series, but I feel like we can give them a run for their money. So do we continue to make this? Because the schedule, the schedule doesn't get easy. Right. Yeah. So do we continue to try and make this push and we miss the playoffs by one game or we get swept in the first or like, like. I mean, I mean, it, it, well, well, in general. So currently the Hornets are still 10th in the East. All right. But they hold a tiebreaker against Miami and Orlando in any situation. So we have an outside shot of winning, winning the actual division and getting the AC or 7 seed. It's uh, taking a viable option at this point. You, you, you're already seeing the growth out the youngsters. Imagine adding another piece in there. Maybe you get the top three pick and a job Morant. Or, 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 or maybe you get a Kobe White, who will be a valuable backup point guard in case Kim believes. How do you feel about tanking in general? It, is, it, it doesn't, doesn't work in the NBA. It, 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 are, are, there, are there good results with it? Let, let, let me. I, I, I couldn't wait to talk about this because <laughs> th this is where I, I'll be. I'll be frank, man. Hornets fans really pissed me off with this, man. And here's the thing. Here, here's why the tanking fans are going to be very disappointed. The Hornets. You know what? If the Hornets truly want to tank. If they truly, truly want, if if Michael Jordan comes down to the locker room and say, "Hey, I don't really want to win anymore," you know, you know what will happen? Nick Batum will be starting again. Uh, he he get thirty plus minutes. Uh, all the old guys will get most of the minutes. Marvin, Cody, MKG, Nick. That same team will be back on the floor. It's not happening, guys. Gotcha. It's not happening. As far as tanking in general, the the main example that I love using is the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors never purposely tanked, and they got Klay Thompson and Steph Curry out of the deal. The Brooklyn Nets didn't tank. Look at look at where they are versus where they are where they were currently, currently sixty four four or five ago. years ago. You know what I mean? There's other ways to succeed in this league, man. And and it, it's like tanking is just this like I, I, it feels like an easy way out for some people, and, and people feel like it's a surefire way. To be to contend or to or to see a bright future, and it's just not. 
look at the Sacramento Kings. Like, yeah, they're good. They're they have a, a, a good foundation in place now. Look how long it took them. Yeah. Look at the Phoenix Suns. They've been taking for how long now? Yeah. Like, that's my worst fear is to be the Suns or the Kings. I don't want that. I don't want to sit ten years just to wait for us to say, oh, we got a good nucleus now. I got news for y'all. We got a good young nucleus now. If, if you if you haven't noticed the last four games, guys, uh, these young kids look like they're pretty good. I, I mean, for those of us who actually watch games instead of watching highlights, they look like this is a good young nucleus right there. So, And, I, and I'll bring up two points today. Uh, my, my first point, if I were to ask you to name any NBA team who successfully tanked, who could you name? The, the the Sixers maybe the but. Sixers but people don't take into account and they the had a Sixers, whole bunch of misses the Sixers didn't take I I I'm, I'm glad you guys said oh, that. No, that, that that happened today that, that whole today. process is bullshit to me <laughs> okay here's why here, here's my deal on why the Sixers didn't take. did they suck yes they royally suck but they drafted MB and then what happened with MB got injured he missed his entire up. rookie season got injured no 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 no, no, no. I refuse to believe that you will take an NBA player, a number one overall pick, and say, hey, I want you to sit on the bench for your entire season. I want you to take the game that you love, not practice, but the game that you love, <laughs> that you've been working on your entire life, and I want you to sit down for an entire year. I don't believe that happened. I believe he legitimately got hurt. The Sixers still suck, which allowed them to draft Ben Simmons. Gotcha. You know what that reminds me of? San Antonio Spurs. And what happened then? They got a number one pick out of it. And, and, but they, how? But David Robinson got hurt. David so Robinson. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So so David Robinson. It wasn't Bradley, a take. Yeah. There, you cannot go back and find one scenario in which you can justify tanking actually. The statistics don't show it. Even if, you, even if we agree that Philadelphia tank, tank, and that's why they are where they are now, that's only one scenario. That's only one out of how many times that someone is actually trying to tank. My second point is why the Hornets will never tank, no matter the scenario is, the owner of the Charlotte Hornets is arguably the greatest player, uh, the greatest basketball player of all time. He is the greatest it's basketball no player of all time. I have to cater to, yeah. okay? to the other generation, okay? I got to cater to the other generation. But he is <laughs> arguably... The greatest player of all time. So what do you think, if you're you're in the boardroom meeting and you're coming up with different scenarios, what do you think Michael Jordan, how do you think he will respond if you said, hey, let's let's tank, let's let's intentionally lose, let's 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 do this and not try to win each and every this, this is a man who, who never took games off for load management and, and, and now you're saying, hey, you want to tank? It's not happening. I mean they they've done it before. And, and, and the fruit we had to bear is, is Michael K. Gilchrist. So that, that wasn't a successful plan for us. Well, and before you move on, my bad, I, don't, I didn't see that move as tanking. Because when Jordan took over the Bobcats, we, we, we couldn't build a team because we were in such financial debt. Gotcha. And so he got rid of all of that, all of those ugly contracts so that we could get under the cap and then possibly start building the team. Because, and, 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 and to talk to that point, specifically, we were like luxury tax with that Bobcats team. Yeah. There was absolutely no reason to be luxury tax with that. I love that team. Don't get me wrong. I, the, you know, the Jackson Wallace, the Al Chandler Chandler team, Chandler like, Chandler. I like that team. But that team was not top four team competing a for championships, so there's just no reason for that to happen, to be the luxury tax. So, to your point, it was more financial than it was, let's tank and get a draft pick, yeah, you know what I mean? And then we all see what happens, so. Speaking yeah. of luxury tax, Kimba Walker's a free agent in the summer. Here we go again. <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah. Uh, so if Kimba makes an all-NBA team, that's $220 million mm -hmm. over five years. Mm -hmm. If he does it, it's 170. And if he leaves and goes somewhere else, it's 141, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what chances do you give Kimba to make an All NBA team? I think year? I think it's 241, the Supermax contract. I think it's 241, okay. and if he doesn't qualify Supermax, the 241 goes to 190, I believe. Yeah, 190. Yeah. But then if he leaves, then it's it's 140. 41. It's right. 141. Yeah. And to be clear, this is just any All NBA team, first, second, or third. First, second, and third. Yeah, first, second, and third. Okay. 
Here's here's my deal on that. It's a lot of people out there who would not pass up eighty million dollars. If he gets the super max, it's hard to justify losing eighty million dollars. But if I've taken the money that I've made up to this point and I have used it wisely and I have invested and I have saved it, that eighty million dollars can be made up in other avenues. I can I can go to New York, I can go to LA, two of the biggest markets. Um, in, in, in the states right now, in the league right now, and I can make that money up. I can I can do commercials. I can do endorsements. And if I go to LA, I have something there that I don't have here in Charlotte. And that's a chance to win. That's a chance to go to the second round. So for me, um, if I'm Kemba Walker, I honestly don't know what he would do right now when you throw the money into it. But if he stays here for the Supermax, I'll, I'll liken it to this scenario. It's like when you are, you're in a relationship and the relationship isn't going too good and you're debating on whether or not you should leave or whether or not you should stay for the kids. And that's kind of where Kim Walker is right now. And we all know what happens when you stay for the kids. <laughs> so Jamal, I'm just taking it. I'm happy kids and they're happy kids. Now I'm depressed. Thank you. <laughs> 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 No, but 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 I, I've been pretty consistent on where I stand with the whole Kimba Kimba Walker thing, man. And I can only harp on what Kimba has said. And every indication is he wants to stay here and make it work. Again, none of us are insiders. We don't have the inside school. We ain't talking to Michael. I'm only going off, you know, interviews of what Kimba Walker said. Now, um, with, with with all that being said, man. It just, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it all goes back to Kupchak's plan. And I'm going to throw a wrench in here. I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to actually, there's actually something else we're not talking about that's going to affect all this. Kyrie Irving is going to affect this too. And I'm going to tell you yeah. why. Yeah. Every indication is he's out of Boston. Like yeah. every single thing you see on TV points to him leaving Boston. What if he wants to go to the Lakers? That could throw a wrench in a lot of plans. And as far as Kimba going to New York, I, I, there is not one bone in my body believes that he actually wants to go back to New York for multiple reasons. You know what I mean? Kevin Durant has already shot down. It was a report that came out of that Kevin Durant said he'll never play for New York. So wow. if you're Kevin Walker, you go to New York for what? I say, let, let's be real. I we we can criticize. Look, the Hornets are one thing. We can be critical of the franchise and moves and all that. But the Knicks, hey, I, look. If you're Kim Walker, you're going to go if they get Zion and you're going to wait till, till that team rounds itself out? I mean, you might as well stay in Charlotte. Let's be real. Yeah. I, aside from the market and, 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 and endorsements and all that other stuff. So, the thing, I just don't think it's such a sure thing that he's leaving. I really yeah. don't, man. I just don't because, again, man, it, it, you know, Kim could – there's he could go anywhere he wants to. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I – Eighty million dollars is eighty million dollars, man. Yeah. And and I've said this so many times. Mitch Kupchak has got his work cut out for him yeah. because the Hornets need a plan to get better. And the reality is, it it is going to be tougher for us to get better if he resigns for that Superman. That's just reality. So somehow, some way, Kupchak has got to put his genius hat on and say, "Look, man." This is what I'm going to do. We're going to free up room. We're going to try to get you something. We got this in the works. We talked to such and such. He's interested. It's going to have to be that set plan for Kim Walker saying, you know what, let's roll. Let's, let's get me, this done. Let me interject real quick and ask a question. With everything that you just said, uh, with with the youngins playing so much as of late, and we've seen their yeah, problems, do you think that 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 has possibly swayed Kimball? L- listen, reason? man, we we have a short sample size as far as what the young have, you know how well the youngins have been playing. But if you're if if I'm Kim and I look at that, it's like man, there's hope. I, I I'm sorry, y'all. These last three games have really impressed me with these youngins, man. I I, I may be overreacting. Um, maybe my fandom is coming out, maybe just a tad bit, maybe, maybe I'm overreacting, but at the same time, man, it's just like, it, you can't argue that they look like a different team with yeah. that, you know, with, the, yeah. with these young guys. You can't. Bridges has finally got comfortable. He's Bridges right. has finally got comfortable. He, that, he, he has busted through that rookie wall like the Kool-Aid, man. It's like, I'm here, wow. All right, all right. Shooting, pull up threes. All right, we're going to end that, we're going to end that segment. And uh, Hornets fans, if you have any questions or concerns for us, uh, please send submit a video question. 
uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to address, uh, to address those questions to the uh, Panther segment uh, called Back to Back Winning Season. No pun intended. <laughs> so, recently, pun intended. Yeah. Pun intended. Pun intended. <laughs> so recently, Cam Newton was on the uh, late night show with James Cronin, and uh, he had an interesting comment. February, he went vegan. When is, Cam, vegan. When is Cam not that interesting <laughs> comment? Cam, Cam is, a, a, is, a, is a man that's interesting. February was, was vegan, and March, no climax. So, fellas, I have a question for you. How do you feel about that? And have you ever had to sacrifice uh, <laughs> anything important for the betterment of yourself? Well, luckily I'm not an athlete who makes millions of dollars, so nothing to sacrifice, and it's probably never been on purpose. Um, <laughs> other than that, as far as Cam Newton comments, <laughs> as, far, as far as the Cam Newton comments, man, TMI a little bit. Man, like, I mean, is was, that okay to was, say, TMI? You know what I mean? Um, more power to him, you know what I mean? Okay, cool, man. Is it gonna make you throw the football further? Fine. Is it gonna make your shoulder heal faster? All that pent up tissue. Cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> you might so, have to take some off the fastball. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so this is gonna be quick, all right? <laughs> no um, funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't, don't shoot a little too fast. <laughs> You know, you know, you know. The first thing I thought when 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 I heard that he was he was he was giving up sex for a month, is he about to get married? Well, is he is he is he, is he practicing? Is, is, is he getting, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! I have a PSA. So when you're married, there's no climax for three weeks out the month. <laughs> so then you continue on. So so he's about to get married. So so Thank within the next six months, we should be explaining the proposal. He's he's basically just. Just getting ready. Is that is that what's going on? It's probably pretty good. Bro, that sounds accurate. Like here, here, okay, here's my deal. If that's what you want to do, go right on ahead. But when the season starts, just be able to do what you need to do. Stay stay mechanically sound. Don't throw the ball too high. Just do what you need to do. That's what you think. Will, will will get you right mentally, physically, uh, spiritually, all that good stuff. Then hey, go go right on ahead and congratulations on getting in the early practice. I, I hate to sound like this guy, because this guy gets on my last nerve when I turn on my radio and hear stuff like this. But I gotta say this: I, I I'm I'm not one of these overly critical dudes of Cam, but I will say this much: How come we couldn't get an interview with Cam? Was like, you know what? I, I I'm improving my footwork this off season and. Uh, I'm approving my mechanics and I'm throwing the ball every day and I moved out to such and such a train to throw the How come we couldn't get that? I mean, like, it's it's cosmetic stuff, man. And it's cool. It's It sounds productive. And the answer to that question will, will tie in to, to the next segment. So I'll wait till we move over. And, and, and then Kim was kind of on his social life run. He was in L.A., yeah. went to the Lakers game with his kids. I, I, I understand you want to be laid back and have a good time. Recently, uh, Cam's kickball tournament was moved from Memorial Stadium to BOA. How do you guys feel about that, and, and why is temper so damn awesome? <laughs> Again, whenever I see something, I always ask myself uh, a question. So when I saw that his kickball tournament was being moved to Bank of America Stadium, you want to know the first question I asked? Right. When is temper running for person? <laughs> <laughs> when is temper running for person? 2020. When is temper running for person? 2024. 2024. 2024. <laughs> and, 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 and here's the reason why I say that. Uh, so, so Cam Newton's been running in this kickball tournament for what, about four years now? Yeah, four Three, years. four, four or five right. years now. It's a pretty good tournament. Right. It's always been held at Memorial Stadium down mm-hmm. in Central Pima Community College. I actually attended the tournament last year. But even with, I have never, not once, even questioned or asked as to why this isn't, the tournament isn't in Bank of America State. Right. Considering that he's a franchise's uh, football player. Yeah, right. So, so Tepper moving the tournament to Bank of America uh, State, this should not even be a headline. This this is just humanity. Yeah. This, this is, this is a smart businessman. This 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 is a person who cares about his people. This is someone who cares about his players. And to go back to what you guys asked earlier, I think everything that Temper is doing now <clears throat> is a testament of why we're getting all these sound bites from Cam Newton. Yeah. Because yeah, right. when you compare him to Richardson, who, who was the owner before Temper is now, this just kind of more so solidifies the prison style stranglehold gotcha. that Richardson had on the franchise. Why is your franchise? franchise quarterback not having his tournament in your stadium. stadium. With everything that Temper has done, I, I think this this does nothing 
but solidify who he is as a person. I don't know uh, the type of person or the things that Tepper did when he was in Pittsburgh, but if this is the guy who was in Pittsburgh, then I just want to apologize to the Steelers fans because obviously we took something away from you guys that, that was pretty right. doggone good. Right. Because, I mean, just 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 salute the Tepper, man, you yeah. know? I, you know, just to kind of echo what you said, my question was, what took so long? I, yeah. I mean, seriously, it, this is a no-brainer, man. And I, I really don't have much to add to what, to what Vince has already said, man, because you compared Memorial Stadium to Bank of America Stadium. I mean, <laughs> come on, man. It, I, At least could have played at night stadium. I, 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 mean, I mean, really, my high school played football games at Memorial Stadium 20 years ago. So just to kind of give you <laughs> an idea of what shape that stadium is in. And, and the thing is, man, it's just like, you know, to kind of harp on the relationship with Richardson and Cam versus Tepper and Cam, it's like night and day, man. Like, yeah. like, and I, and I feel like Cam is like a free man now. Like, even his Instagram account is different. Like, he, his whole vibe is different. And I think we, as far as Cam and the Panthers go, man, I, I think we are at least set up. Because I don't want to get into predictions. I don't, that's not what I do. But we are set up to see something very special from Cam and his teammates and this team because when you feel good, you perform good. When you feel respected as a man, you perform better. And I, Cam has got to feel a lot more valued and respected outside of, like, money and the contract because people on the outside have to understand, man, like, these athletes have big egos, they have pride, and they want to and, and they want to feel like they're valued outside of just money. Yeah, You know what I mean? So little stuff like this is, like, so – important you know what i mean and temper seems like he gets it man when do we get our temper for president banner i'm hanging <laughs> hey, man, I'm, 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 i need the bumper stick on the car i'm going to kinko's i'm printing them out today <laughs> uh charlotte 704 all your stores make the temper for 2024 <laughs> and, and look we need our profits off of it <laughs> hey, look, just, just remember who thought of it first so, you know all right um Recently, uh, Thomas Davis, the mayor of Charlotte, right. long-term Panther, one of the greatest yeah. Panthers ever, right. had an interview during All-Star Week of Fox Sports, Christine Leahy. Uh, he, he made a, a, a strong comment to me that, that, that kind of resonated. He said that he wished the Panthers would treat him like the Cardinals treated Larry Fitzgerald. What are you guys' thoughts and opinions on that? I'm, 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 I'm kind of torn. I, I have to say this before I get to my statement about this. We love Thomas Davis. Mm -hmm. If you don't love Thomas Davis as a Panther, you're not a Panthers fan. It, yeah. It's simple as that. Thomas Davis has been everything. He is a landmark athlete to this franchise. He's a cornerstone to this franchise. We love him to death. With all that being said, you look at the Panthers releasing him versus the Cardinals holding on to Larry Fitzgerald, and it speaks to the difference between the franchises. Mm -hmm. Look at the Cardinals franchise versus the Panthers franchise in the last 10 years. And sometimes, man, tough decisions have to be made. We don't like it. We, none of us are going to like seeing Thomas Davis in the Chargers uniform next year. It's going to mm -hmm. look weird. We want, it, it, you know, the the, the story would, would, would look a lot better if Thomas Davis retired as a Panther. We, we want to see that. But the thing is, man, we, it's a new regime here. It's a new owner. And these decisions have to be made, man. The Panthers have to. They're, they're not in a salary cap hell to harness or in, But at the same time, they had to clear money off, man. They got to get younger. It was of the highest importance that the Panthers get younger on defense. And Thomas was an old dog on that defense, yeah. man. And it, it was just necessary, man. And and, and, I, and I, you know, I, I I hope Thomas Davis doesn't feel like the Panthers disrespected him. I don't know what happened as far as the discussions. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's, if he didn't see it coming. I only hope he just kind of understands why the Panthers had to make the move that he did. And when it's all said and done, man, number 58 better be in that damn ring of honor. When it's all, yes, it, it's, it's it not was, even it a discussion. You know what I mean? So when I first heard about the story, um, I kind of looked at it as, oh, here we go, another another athlete with an ego complaining, you know, all that stuff. And then I went and watched the soundbite. And after watching the soundbite, after watching the interview, I actually kind of sympathized with with Thomas Davis yeah. because he he wasn't going out like we've we've had players in the past who once they got let go, they went and taking shots at the organization, mm -hmm. but. That that's not what Thomas Davis is doing. He he basically said he respect the move. He doesn't like it, but he respected it. And he's just saying that if I had it my way, 
this is what I would have wanted to happen. So I, I kind of, I empathize with, with, with what he said. And we've all been in situations that we wish it would have played out a different way. He was very respectful in the interview. He didn't throw shade at anybody. Uh, he made it a point to uh, talk up uh, Coach Rivera, call him an A1 dude and all that good stuff. So there was no shade. There was no animosity in his voice or anything like that. But to get on the business side of the decision, I honestly think <clears throat> that this move by Herney was just a move. He was making a safe move. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily the right move. It wasn't necessarily a bad move. But Herney is the reason that we were in the position that we were in when um, Gettleman took yeah, over. That's a good point. And I think what he's doing, he is simply just trying to avoid those same um, traps that he fell in the first go and, 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 let, and let me say this too, man. You know what? When, when Herney... When Ernie got kind of re rehired the second time, man, you know, I, I didn't know how to feel about that. I was kind of like, well, this is kind of just out of necessity. We, you know, it, Ghetto Man got fired at a really weird time, and it wasn't a lot of time to go out and look for a new GM. And you know, and <clears throat> we're at this point now where it looks like Ernie is his job is in his job is in place, and he's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I say all that to say. Sometimes a, a second go around is not a bad thing yeah. because you yeah. can learn from your mistakes yeah. the first time. Yeah. And for Herney to make a move like that, we know ten years ago, he Jared he Richardson and Herney would have never did anything <laughs> like this. You know what I mean? So it, it's just kind of cool to kind of see, you know, a, as much as we want, you know, Thomas Davis retired as a Panther, but it's still cool to see the Panthers kind of evolve. Into some uh, evolve to a franchise that prior that prioritizes making smart decisions and winning versus kind of like the blind loyalty, yeah. right? And, and here's what's gonna happen: the fan the fan base is soaking right now because, mm -hmm. like, like like Jamal said, we love Thomas Davis. We wish we could have seen him um, retire as a Panther. But here's what's gonna happen: when the boys lined up in September and and when Shaq Thompson started making plays. Who was Tom Davis? Right. Wait, what? I'm oh, say who was Tom? Well, well, not who, but it's it. Herney, Herney won't be vilified as gotcha, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Because because like Jamal said, we have a lot of young players on our roster who can make an immediate impact, but we we have the veterans Lock who, who are blocking them from doing so. And uh, you know, Thomas said he's been in the game what 13 years now. Yeah. So the same way that when he came in, he took whoever else's spot. It, this is the cycle of life, and it's it's time for Shaq Thompson to get to get that star role and, and to prove why, why he was right. And, uh, and uh, I just want to say this: we appreciate you, Thomas Davis. Definitely. You, Definitely. You, 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 you fought through the three ACL surgeries, and you are the reason that I love to say keep pounding, man. Yeah, no, he's the embodiment of keep pounding. Yeah, and, and what and I, you know, we won't make this long and drawn out, man. But one thing I just got to say, man, like his community involvement has been also a one as well, yeah. man. So that that dude is just like. The, a, a real stand-up guy in every single way. So One thing I always respect about Thomas Davis, like Jamal was saying, is everything that he did outside of football. Take take the Hornets. We're all Hornets fans. When when Cleveland comes to town or when the Lakers come to town or when New York comes to town, that's when a lot of the local athletes decide to come out. But when, right. when we play when we play Memphis or when we play Check Sacramento, nobody comes out. TD. But you see TD's Thomas Davis on the side. You might see Rivera too, but yeah. TD's right there in the and That's one thing I will always respect about Thomas Davis is that he didn't come to the marquee games. He came to the games. And he immersed himself into the culture. Let's segue into our culture segment. Recently, the Hornets had uh, a couple games this past couple weeks where it was disappointing to say the least. The Celtics game, uh, we, we were overtaken by Celtics fans. <laughs> the Miami game, it was downright embarrassing. Me personally, I, 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 I want to do bad things to people about that. But, but Jamal, can you kind of give me your feelings? <laughs> I, I know you have a lot to say about this topic. How long we got? <laughs> I mean, as long as you need me to take, brother. We'll talk about the Miami game first. And, and of course, I have to personalize this. Y'all know I go to a lot of Hornets games. I was going to go to that one, and I didn't go to that one. The reason I didn't go, I was lazy, and I was tired, and I was just like, I just want to be home. It, it wasn't anything else outside of that. So I was excited about the game because of the implications of the game. The game turned into something else on the court. It was a, it was a bad, bad, bad loss. Yeah. which already made me angry. But what made me angrier, I'm talking about boiling point angry, a damn let's go heat chant. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? I'm trying my best not to curse right now. <laughs> Are you mother... <laughs> <laughs> but look, man, Charlotte is 
an evolving transplant city. There are a lot of people who live in Charlotte who are not from Charlotte. I understand that. But where are the damn Hornets fans at to offset these classless, sleazy, bandwagon fans? I am not a proponent of doing anything stupid to get you kicked out of a game. I personally would not do that. I don't want to be banned from Hornets games. But if I looked up one day and I saw my my Miami Heat fan get punched in the face at a game, I probably would crack a smile. I'd probably be like, I, like it'd be some Hardy Moseys over my head. Like, I wouldn't do it. Personally, me, I wouldn't. It's just not worth it to me. But let me let me talk to the people who are from Charlotte. If your birth certificate says Mecklenburg. County CMC Presbyterian Hospital. <laughs> Let me talk to y'all for a second. It's okay to be a fan of your home. I, I, look, yes, we're below 500. We're struggling to get in the playoffs again. Your opinion on Michael Jordan isn't favorable. I get all of that. Where is your passion? It is okay. Some of you root for the Cowboys. They suck, but your passion is still there. True. Why can't we get the same passion for the Hornets? You can, you can be critical. You can talk all the crap you want to. Where's the passion? It, it's too different things you know what I mean and when I'm watching stuff like this man it's just like okay cool we got uh, some bandwagon fans that we're not gonna see anymore after Dwayne Wade leaves you, we, we clearly know why they're there but there should be enough Hornets fans to kind of drown that out I have to give you another example last night Jeremy Lamb hits this crazy shot to wins this game and I'm like losing my crap about this you know what I was thinking why am I the only one excited about this on my personal I'm speaking of like personal timelines and Twitter not we all know how we get down but I'm just talking about Amongst my friends, amongst people I know, why am I the only one excited? Oh man, they ain't gonna make the playoffs anyway, man. So why I don't It's okay you have passion, man. Like it's nothing wrong with it. You can you in your mind you can say, all right, man, we're probably not gonna make the playoffs. Look, it's still fighting. It's still fighting. Still fighting. That, look, I don't mean to be long winded about this. Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. I have to I have to, one more example. <laughs> one more. One more. I promise I'm, I this is it, because I know I can get about this. So I went I also went to the Septus game. And, and this is not as bad of a moment as the Heat game was. So I went to the Seventh game almost didn't go for the same reason. I was like, man, I just want to be on the couch. But I had two tickets. So I was like, eh, I'm outside. Let me go. I go to Seventh game, man. And at halftime, I tweeted, man, April 10th can't get here fast enough because <laughs> we're down, we're down 18, 18, 18 to the Celtics at that point. Seven to go. And I almost left. I, I almost got my seat and said, man, I can't take this anymore, man. And not only could I not take the performance on the court, I couldn't take seeing all this green in the crowd. The wrong green. And there was a, a short amount of time where it's like I could audibly hear a let's go Celtics chant about to start. But this is a very proud fan moment of mine. They were about to start it and I don't know where this came from, like the heavens above. The Hornets fans booed it. Like, shut it down. <laughs> Y'all not doing this here. Like, it, let's go boo, and, and it stopped. And I'm just like, what? Where are these fans at all the time? Where are these same fans when LeBron comes to town? Where are they at? This is Charlotte, North Carolina, man. Where's the 704 people at? Vince. So the Panthers have this problem too. You go to the game against the Steelers. That's changed a lot. It's, 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 changed. it's changing. It's changing. It's better. Speak to that in general. I just, got, just. I gotta follow that. That's what I gotta follow. Try your best. Try your best. Okay. Well, well, I'm gonna throw you out of you. Wait, no, no, no. The reason why it's changed for the Panthers is the reason why it hasn't changed for the Hornets. And I get, I get the transplant city and all that stuff. But we gotta have a winning product. We gotta have a winning product. And it's not right when, when, when we start winning consistently and those fans start coming, they will be bandwagon fans because they're only there because the team is winning. But if you are consistently losing, and this goes back to our conversation last week, if you are consistently losing, it is very hard if you live outside of Uptown to drive down there, deal with that traffic, deal with that parking, and then go watch them get beat by 10, 15, 20 points. Now, I, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to You're going to say that that is a weak argument because no, when the Warriors come to town, it's not weak. When, when when the Warriors come to town, they come out. But you got to understand, that's one out of 82. You're asking a, a specific demographic of people to come to the same place 41 times, and in years past, 30 of those 41 would be L's. Like, you got to have some strong resolve to continue to put yourself through that. See, but I'm going to give an example. 
about a month and a half ago, I went to the Knicks game in New York. They were playing the Spurs. The crowd was electric. They beat the Spurs that night. They was, oh, they're not gonna make the playoffs, it doesn't matter. Man, the fans were electric, they were cheering and everything. The Knicks have not been good. For a long time. Consistently. They, they, I, I, outside of those Ewing years, they haven't won a title since 72. But here's the deal, my, sorry for cutting you off. The Knicks actually have a winning history. The Knicks have been here longer than, than we've been alive. I, I, so, but, but, I, but I would say New Yorkers have better civic pride than Charlotte teams. If the team- I, I think that's- <laughs> If the team never left. Of course. If the team, if the Hornets never left, I believe that we would still have that dedication as a fan base. But we left, and we had nothing in Charlotte but the Panthers. And then everybody became Lakers fans when the Hornets left. And, right. Yeah, all the Cavaliers and he. Yeah. So when they came back, a lot of Hornets fans get upset because if if Charlotte is playing and if Duke and or Carolina is playing at the exact same time, a lot of those fans in Charlotte are going to watch their college game because they've been here since the early 1900s. They're not going anywhere. Right. They're going to be here forever, and they and they consistently win. Charlotte can't say that. They they left and then came back, and and they didn't just come back. They came back as the Hornets after we spent what seven seasons as the wow. Bobcats. And we all know how the Bobcats went. And like there are people out there to this day that still think we are about ten years. Yeah. So it's so the only way to change the culture of this fan base is for them to start with. And so we gotta win so the original fans can join the bandwagon for the new fans. We just gotta win. <laughs> we just gotta win for people to start showing. And like, don't get me wrong, I hate it when a, when when fans of the other team come and they take over the arena. I absolutely hate it. But I understand, you know, the dynamics behind it. And until we start winning, because if if we were a consistent 50, 60 win team, that, that seven year old kid, Look, he's not wearing a Steph Curry jersey. Let me let me let me let me let me say this, man. Let me let me get specific real quick, okay? You made great points. Like, because you, you, you kind of argue the same thing I was arguing. Because remember I was saying, like, I had to really get myself up to go to the self. Like, and, and let me be very clear. Us struggling so much was a big reason I had to say, man, do I want to do this today? Like, I'll be very clear about that, all right? But let me be very specific real quick. There are people I know personally who are from Charlotte, North Carolina, who were born in Presbyterian Hospital and, and Carolina Medical Center, who want to throw on whatever the hot team is at the time, it, 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 wherever LeBron goes and putting on a... Those are the fans that there are no excuse. All that stuff you just said, I agree. That you can throw every all every one of those excuses out the window. Every last one of them. Those are the slimy, spineless, classless fans that I will never defend. And they are the worst type of fans that they shouldn't even be allowed to live in wow. something you know, like that. That's what, like that's the kind of stuff that pisses me off to the core. If you are from Alabama and you don't have a, a basketball team and you want to ride the LeBron wave, more power to you. If I went to Ransom Middle School with you and you coming up to the Celtics game with green jersey on, you are I, – I have nothing positive to say you about you. You're a turncoat. You, 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 traitor. You, you are a treasonous traitor fan. <laughs> and you know what's going to you know happen? As soon as Charlotte starts winning, all of those guys you all just mentioned guys. will be wearing Charlotte's jersey. That's what's going to happen. But until, until, until happens, Charlotte starts winning, this is what and I'm not justifying it, no, until Charlotte starts winning. I agree. Cause I agree. Because I, I got friends, because I grew up an hour from Charlotte. I got friends as well that we we went to school with, and we wore the the, uh, the, the junior Hornets basketball yeah. jersey when we played rec ball. And and oh snap, LeBron is in Miami right now. Let me go get a Miami jersey. Oh snap, LeBron is back in Cleveland. Like <laughs> yeah. I hate it. And, and, and we we we're we're tight. We're tight. And when I see that crap, oh, I'm making a point to shit on. I'm making a point. So I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. But until they start winning. Do you, you know how sick and tired I am of seeing people and we'll get talking about basketball? You know, man, I'm a Hornets fan, man. As long as they ain't playing my Lakers. Like, I, 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 uh. Hey, no, you know what? We, we, no, we, we good. 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 talk about right. that. Okay. Okay. I, got, I, got, I got a quick layup. Yes. So, Saturday was Bobcats night. Give what? me your opinion the feels. <laughs> okay. The feels and opinions. The Hornets. This is going to be fine. The Hornets. 
product is not a good product. But as a fan base, we have always gave an A1 rating to their marketing team. Right. Yeah, their no marketing doubt. team is yeah, A1. Yeah, no doubt. But for the last five or six years, we have had a small grassroots movement within the fan base where on Halloween, or the game closest to Halloween, we wear our Bobcats jersey, and we call it Bobcats Halloween. For the life of me, I would not be able to understand who in that think room <laughs> thought it was a good idea. I don't even know which game it was, but I, I don't know who either. thought it was a good idea to do a Bobcats night in 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 March. And, and another thing, because because of the history of the Bobcat years, like it's nothing positive. It's nothing positive. And you had Coolio perform on that night. <laughs> so now Coolio doesn't know nothing about Charlotte Sports. He 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 he's, LA. he's, he's a former big time musician. He probably needs the money. But as a fan, like why are you having Coolio perform on Bobcats night? Are you trying to say something about Coolio? Like, did you just need to fill in a slot? Coolio like, loser? I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. But, I mean, it, it, like, it just, it, and I didn't even know until after the game. I saw I saw a photo of, uh, of Hugo and the former Bobcat Rufus. mascot and Rufus. And I was like, oh, snap. It was it was Bobcat. Maybe I should have went to the game. I would know these things. But had I known it was Bobcat, I would have put on my ringers. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at the game, and Al Jefferson, Daryl Henderson, and Matt Carroll was there. And they were introducing them. And my first thought was, I said, why are they here? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Because I legitimately didn't know it was Bobcats <laughs> night. I did not know. I had no knowledge of it being Bobcats tribute night. I just didn't. I just thought, you well, Gerald Henderson and Matt Carroll worked for the organization. Yeah. Al Jefferson was there. I legitimately just thought, well, Al Jefferson must have just been at the game. They, they must have just they must just be doing a quick shout out. He just came to get some Bojangles. He just came to get some Bojangles <laughs> and watch the game. And then, and hopefully not fell another and game. to make it worse, there was, a, there was like this segment in the game where Rufus runs out. I said, and again, I was like, why is Rufus here? <laughs> <laughs> and then, but I didn't, I didn't even put it all together. <laughs> I, I did not even put it. I didn't put Rufus and being there without Al Jefferson. Jer I never put it together. So after the game, I was like, wow, it was Bobcast night? <laughs> <laughs> But look, let me be clear about something. And this is kind of echoing what you said, man. Fred Whitfield has been amazing as far as the marketing for Hornets. No one doesn't translate. Awesome. Give a shout out to Pete Gwelly as well. Yeah, Pete Gwelly as well. Oh, yeah. They have been absolutely fantastic when it comes to the marketing of this team. Aside from on-court production, which, you know, they don't have anything to do with that. Again, man, I, out of those two, which one of them said, hey, man, you know what? Let's have a Bobcast night <laughs> on Buzz City night. Versus the Celtics in March. I'm speechless. And you know, I, I, and you know what's I, worse? You know what's worse about that? In addition to somebody actually coming up with the idea, somebody had to approve. Michael? <laughs> 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 Look, I'm gonna reenact Michael's uh, uh, involvement with this. You guys sure? <laughs> oh, what is my money? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right, we're going to uh, close this out uh, by giving our shout-outs for the week. Uh, Vince, you want to start us off? Okay, so those of you that live in the uh, Charlotte area, it's getting warmer now. Get out, get active. Uh, if you know me personally, you know I play a lot of kickball. I'm not playing this year, but uh, we've had a few uh, kickball leagues that have started. So get out, get active. If you want to play, let me know. Reach out to me. I can get you in contact with a few people. But uh, get out, get active, y'all. Um, I got two shout-outs. Number one, I got to shout out my alma mater, Gardner Webb University. You guys had me really excited for the first half against Virginia. You know, ultimately, talent took over, man. We didn't bring it home, man. But congratulations to Gardner Webb for at least making it to the big dance. A second shout-out to uh, my deaf Charlotte crew. Uh, look forward to working with y'all, and we'll leave it at that. Two shout-outs. First one, Clemson was still the national champions in football. Nah, the yeah. season started yet, and nothing's changed. And my second one is, uh, I want to give a shout-out to the Hornets. They recently had on Monday night the uh, the 50th out of 50 for the Economic Mobility Night. And also, Miles Bridges is actually going out into different communities and, and different Walmarts uh, instead of the usual uh, Stone Crans, yeah. Birkdale, and Real all that. Miles. And so, I uh, just want to give a shout-out to the Hornets. And uh, we, we want to thank you guys for watching Under Construction. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, keep pounding, keep buzzing. Jamila! <laughs>